Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Summer Sea. And look, they fixed it. We can rest a room above the Brine Helmsman. We can purchase an elegant town's house. We do all the things we're supposed to do. And thanks very much to the nice people at Fell Better Games for sorting this out for me. So, let's rest in a room above the Brine Helmsman. The rats keep you awake of nights with their muttering and skirmishing, but the bed is warm and the door has a lock. We have a restful night. We lose one terror and we've lost ten echo. Now we've got not got that much money. Forty-four echoes is a pittance, and there's been a couple of updates since the last time we played this, and they seem to have got rid of my favourite little. Uh, grinding route between London and Venderbite. You can no longer take uh, as many colonists up there. And you can also... Um, the, uh, the, the the pirate ships are not worth as much as they used to be, so the money is not there anymore. On the other hand, I've picked up a couple of interesting new jobs, and one of them is this. Sooth and Cooper Longbox. On first sight, it looks like a tomb colonist coffin. On closer examination, it carries stenciling, reading... Soothe and Cooper, and a handwritten tag. Delivery to Depot A, Station 3. So we, I think we should pop out there. The other thing I've picked up recently is... Let's see if I can find it. In amongst all this stuff... Uh, uh, that one, not 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 that one. Come on, where are you? Here we go. The trouble with tomb colonists. We've got to go to Mangrove College, which is somewhere to the south, and find someone to bring back to uh, Vendabite before we can start shipping colonists up there at all. So, those are our next two jobs. We have a mostly sound hull. We have ten fuel, two food. I think I might buy a third or a fourth one, actually. So, in fact, one, two, one, two. Let's spend all our money. There we go. Now we've got four few food and 12 fuel. And let's have a look at the map. Where we want to go is out here, about as far as we've gone, which is... Uh, we just need to head east, and if we go up to Hunter's Keep, we can jump between the beacons, or we can go down here to Bad Stevner's Abyss and travel east there, because there's that way there's a lot more coast to hug, and hugging coast reduces terror again, so let's do that, shall we? And here we go. So, how are you guys? It's been a while since I spoke to you playing this game, and uh, I've been meaning to... As I said last time, I asked if people wanted me to cut out a lot of the journey times, or to make it a blog of some description, or something like that. And almost exclusively, people have said, hey, let's make it a blog, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do. So, as we're travelling, I'm going to have a little chat with you guys. It means that I'm not going to be promising to put one of these up every week, but I'll put one up when I have something to say. Which, let's face it, is fairly often. You guys know that already, really, don't you? Um, but first of all, about this game, the things that have changed. I've seen other ships floating around, you know, sort of other um, merchant ships, other, other adventurers, things like that. People that are not there to automatically be shot. Which is an interesting change, to be honest with you. And uh, the combat system, I'm I'm still a little dubious about. Uh, it's it's certainly relatively easy to do. It does give the feeling that it's lost a lot of the. Uh, um, how can I put this? It's not lo lost a lot of the, uh, the, the the time with the stats. For example, mirrors, which is supposed to illuminate and enable you to get into combat faster and. Um, use the larger attacks. I'm not finding a direct use for that anymore, which is you know, a bit of a shame. 
Uh, especially after all the work I put by raising the mirrors stat, which is where is it? It's there, 62. It's pretty much my largest stat now. Uh, feeling a bit grumpy about that, to be honest with you. Uh, quick look, see where we are. Getting near the Shepherd Isles. And I think we might as well, to be honest with you, go and get a few port reports while we're doing this. So we're going to coast around the Shepherd Isles down to Fieldhaven, across to the Sisterhood, and then north to Station 3. Let's see how we get on with that. Um, other than that, I'm really happy. My faith in the support team at Fell Better Games has once again been justified. There's so many times that I've had a problem with a game and I've tried talking to supports and I've said, you know, you know it is dealing with support sometimes. Yeah, you two talk to them and say, yeah, well, yeah, okay, well, I, I tried doing X, I tried doing Y, and I tried doing Z, and the next three emails you get back from them was, well, did you try, try doing X, okay? Try rebooting it. Yes, I know, I said in my first email, I tried rebooting it. You are reading to me off the script. It's frustrating, to say the least. So I'm really, really happy. I mean, I, I, I'm dealing with a person, not an autoresponder. That person actually is paying attention. But what's that? Uh, whatever it is, it's gone. And it went quite quickly, actually. Yeah, I was dealing with a person, which always makes me feel better. That person asked intelligent questions. Asked for a copy of my save file. As far as I can tell, looked at the videos I quoted, which was great. I can always use the extra views, you know. And um, just sent me back the save file with, hey, I modified it, it should work now. And believe it or not, it worked. So thank you once again, Shepherd Isles. Of course, the build the bearded watchman tells you. There are no actual shepherds on Shepherd Isles. We have Picnic of the Standing Stones, Tales of the Standing Stones, Tales of the Three Graves, Tales of Thornwell Croft, The Rest of the Z, and Compile a Port Report. Let's do the Port Report first. Surface rolling like a porridge pot with a roar of steam and flash of fire, three wind windows swimming, tentacles. And then we saw His Highness. There is rather a lot of this material. Okay, so what else can we do? We can have a picnic. Actually, we can't have a picnic because we've only got four echoes. Uh, what can we do? That's locked. Tales of Thornwell Croft. What about that Isle to the north? The one that isn't bridged. Tales of the Three Great. Let's, let's do Thornwell Croft first. The Winsdick Farm up there. They're us. Me and you. All the other versions of us. One with a trick leg. One that married his cousin. One that was buried alive characters out of another history. They're waiting up there and plotting, gathering allies, waiting to make their history ours. So don't go there. You won't find them anyways, bringing that they hides in the barn. So we gain the memory of distant shores. All right, what else can we do? I like Shepherd's Isles. I don't remember any of this the last time I was here. Oh, no, we're done. Of course, the bearded watchman tells you, there's no actual shepherds on Shepherd Isles. Sheep are mostly illegal here. Most, mostly illegal. Hmm. No, indeed. It's just the name of the gentleman f that found the Isles. Greybeard sitting in the village square nods solemnly. No sheep, one says, but plenty of tales. Ask us anything. So we're going to have to come back to get those other stories. And quite frankly, I'm tempted to do so. All right. Any shops? The usual rubbish ones. Oh, you sell for even less. Good lord. And anything in the shipyard. No shipyard available. Alright, so let's get out of here, shall we? So, we want to go up now. Let's just have a quick look at the map. Actually, we want to go east to the Sisterhood. So, let's go across Wolf's Rift to the Sisterhood. Dock there, and then we'll head north. Right, what else can I talk about? I can talk about this. How's that? Good. Right, another nightmare. A recurring nightmare. Watched. The sea is as bright as milk. Four stars above are black on a pitchy bed. Something is watching you. Its gaze unfolds your boat. 
You are as transparent as glass. So we can go deeper into the nightmare, or we can confront the nightmare. And they're both almost impossible challenges. So let's confront the, let's go deeper into the nightmare. Let's see what happens. The eye wants to learn you. Well, let it. You'll learn the eye in turn. Right, so you're closer. The sea freezes over, but the ice is clear. We have one room. Wound. We've lost a restful night. Cool. We've lost. We gained twenty-two terra, and we gained one nightmare strength. So yeah, we did really well fighting that one, didn't we? Onwards we go. Still, terra fifty. Fifty-one now. That's not the end of the world. If we could actually find a fight that would lower, and we'll get that put down back down to 50 when we get back to London. So, as long as we don't get that up to 100, we should be alright. And here is Abbey Rock. So let's have a look at that, and then we'll head north and do the final bit of our journey and head back to London. Uh, there we go. Okay, Restless Nights. In the watches of the night, she pad softly past the hatch to the crew's quarters. This is optional. I don't know what it does. Let's go and find out, shall we? Alright, so we can ignore their... Hmm, okay. In the watches of the night, she pad softly past the hatch to the crew's quarters. A man cries out softly in his sleep, desperately. Another... Okay, so we can ignore them, or we can inquire about them. And to be totally honest with you, I don't think we are... Yeah, we're not quite ready for inquiring about this. So let's ignore them. We've lost one Terra. Not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Right, Abbey Rock. First of all, let's compile a port report. Um, the money is nece necessary... Knock on the Iron Gate with news. We can't offer a gift because we don't have a hunting trophy. And we can trade supplies, but to be honest with you, we don't actually have enough supplies. So let's just go with news. The muscular prioress, the abbess's lieutenant, comes to the door to listen. She nods and makes notes. She pays particular attention to the news of the marsh beast predator. Pro sorry, the marsh beast predations and the traffic of the rooftops. In return, she offers a rather perfunctory blessing, but the blessing reassures your crew. So we've lost a couple of terror. That's not bad. Uh, can't trade. Knock on the door. Though we, even though we have no recent news, let's find out. Nothing. Far away, a great bell tolls. It begins to dribble with rain. Who sneezes? What else can we do? We don't want to trade that. Uh, okay, right, I think we're done here. So, let's head onwards, shall we? Up to that beacon, and up to station A. Right, okay. Room, uh, let's talk about a few things. Rim world. I must go and have a look at that somewhere. That actually looks alive where it's bending. Yes, rim world. Um did that in the live stream we have finally finished that game and yeah it's the opinion seems to be a little bit divided about that one I mean some people seem to like it an awful lot but we get that much of the way of views and but I like the game and I think I'm gonna carry on doing it so I hope you guys don't mind I will be putting some more up later on but I'm gonna wait until the next uh, release comes out here. Alpha 8, looking at the change logs, Alpha 8 looks like it's just around the corner. So I'm going to do that one and then I'll start a new one with a bit more balance, uh, attacks of you know, 50, 60 uh, tribesmen happening all the time. Hopefully won't happen again. And we can try some different environments and things like that. So uh, I'm... Oh, in mods as well. It would be nice to do a, a mod run on that too. So hopefully you guys will, at least one or two of you want to watch that, and uh, um, and hope you'll enjoy it. So, okay, let's have a quick look at Station 3. We may infer a Station 1 and a Station 2. We may conjecture a Station 4, but not a Babylon 5. Station 4. Right, we can deliver the long box. 
The only way past the walls is an unimposing but sturdy looking triple locked gate. Of, of silvery metal, a sign beside it reads, Deliveries. The gate stands open. Right. Alright, okay. Ah, there is cargo in the hold marked for this destination. A long, low, heavy box. It'll be fun getting it up the stairs, no doubt. Let's go. Right, up the twisting staircase. There is a great deal of grumbling from the crew. The stairs are sharp-edged and wet. The box is heavy and its contents inclined to shift. After a few slips and a bad bruise to the shin, you resort to placing crew members along the stairs and handing the box along. There is a warehouse at the top of the stairs, but it's not apparently your destination. Another sign points along a narrow path towards the building with the spire. Deliveries, it says, more aggressively this time. Someone in the spired building is singing the song sets your teeth on edge. Right. An occurrence, your trading in the long box's quality is now one. Alright, okay. If they want the box... Right, uh, oh, I see. We're still doing that. Alright. You have a long, heavy box. A winding path ahead that runs perhaps a quarter mile along the, the midst. A crew that is beginning to mutter about having to do land level work. There is a la warehouse just to your right, but the sign says deliveries are to be taken onward. Says it rather emphatically, as a matter of fact. Right, so we can ask for extra hands. We can break into the warehouse and leave the box there. Which we have a pretty good chance to do. Or we can carry a box on to the building with the spire. Now I'm willing to bet our reward will be much less if we do the first one. I don't particularly want to do the second one, so let's do the third one. Going the extra distance might mean that you can charge more for your efforts. The path is slippery and lined with mushrooms. You and your crew have to stop seven or eight times to set down the boxes and blow on your hands. The closer you get, the less the building with the spire looks like a church. The walls are soot blackened and made of brick. There are no windows, only narrow vents up near the roof. From these a low singing can be heard, a song so cheerful that your crew look at one another and frown. It is the song of someone keeping the monsters at bay. At last you are close enough to bang on the door. An austere acolyte answers it. She is dressed in black from head to foot. Her gloves are thick leather and her goggles are double glass. Leave the boxes at the door, she says to you, and then she turns back towards the building, singing her song. Something about candied kittens and flaming violets and the coming of spring. Judging by the rhyme, she's inventing the words as she goes along. You stop her and explain that you expect your extra work to be rewarded. She makes a grudging gesture, but complies. So we've gained five, earning the acolyte's favour. She gained a hundred fragments, that's nice, and we succeeded in an iron challenge. Okay, right. Still more. This is not bad. The austere acolyte directs the arrangement of the long box in the room under the steeple. There are many other boxes there already, stacked in rows, three or four times as many as you have brought. In another corner of the room, is a pile of wood from previous boxes already emptied and dismantled. Singing to herself about a mountain upholstered in velvet, she takes a crowbar to the box. The corpse inside is permanently dead, in a way that the dead of London often are not. Not a drowny, not a tomb colonist, but not coming back either. It looks pale and ordinary except for a slight distension of the skin over the breastbone. Gently, the acolyte presses there and nods, singing about tulips embroidered with yellow floss. She lifts the body onto a marble slab. Without pause and a lyric, she prepares a scalpel. Your presence does not seem to bother her. So, we can watch, we can not watch, or we can watch with medical interest, and I don't think we have enough hearts for that to be worthwhile, so let's just watch. The austere acolyte extracts deftly and with very little blood a heart-sized sphere of silver-grey metal. 
With a giant gnatcracker, she cracks the sphere and another sphere inside that, and another. Finally, in the center, she comes to something heavy, small, and black. She lifts it out with tongs and looks at it through her goggles. The song falters, but she manages to keep humming through them, though the words are lost. She puts the black and heavy thing into a jar marked with the word of the cor with a word of the correspondence. She closes her jar and seals it with red wax. Finally, when the corpse is removed again and the marble slab wiped clean, she comes to pay you. Thank you, she says. Return another day, I may have something else for you. So we've gained another two earning the acolyte's favour. We've get lost one long box, but we've gained one secret. And our occurrence, the trading in long box quality, is now three. So next time we come back here, there should be something else to do. Right. Okay, so we can now get into the port at Station 3. So what else can we do? Right. So it looks like we're going to get another long box somewhere down the line. And we can return later, basically. Okay, oh, down the steep stairs, the song of the acolytes fades behind you. But you find yourself humming their odd melodies. I wanted to bet it's not going to change if we come back. No, I didn't think so. So it looks like we're going to have to come back to this port for this to matter. But still, that has been an interesting journey. So let's have a quick look at the map. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go down and look for uh, Mangrove College. But I don't think we're ready for that yet. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sail east, north, and then west to Hunter's Keep, get another port report there, and head back to London. Uh, actually, first, I think we're going to have to see if I can get the attention of one of these things. Is that going to attack me? Yes, it is. Got him. How much should we lose? Oh, we lost a few points there. Right, let's see what we got. Okay. Jilly Fleur's End. The Jilly Fleur. Is it a young jellyfish? Jellyfish, right? A lesser subspecies? Do the dreams of jellyfish become real? In any case, now it's a sad slick of goo dissolving into the Z. So scoop it up, perhaps you can eat it. Better yet, perhaps your zealers can. <laughs> or we can let it disperse and watch its oil rainbow colours fade. So we can do that because we don't have a, a port report visage and Okay, so we've not surveyed survey visage. Do you want to scoop it up, or actually, because this might one day stop, let's try that one first. A face from above the Jilly Fleur's cap look, does look a little like a woman's face. She dissolves like smeared paint. Well, that's got us a Z story out of that, which we can trade later on, so that's good. Right. Back to it. Uh, oh, that's why I couldn't close it. Okay. Loot. One supply if you must. or And we can't record any observations because we didn't observe anything. So here we go. So we gain one supplies. Excellent. Right. Let's at the very least have a look up here. So that was relatively easy, and it was only my foolishness sitting there waiting for an attack that got us damaged. Uh, that's good. The air trembles, a breath of change passes. Ooh, let's avoid that bit of rock there. How are we doing for fuel? I should think desperately need to start to head back to shore by the looks of it. You picking up anything on the map? No. Right, okay. 
let's go along these beacons to avoid build up terror Go. Ooh. Battle stations. Turn our lights off. Let's see if we can catch up with him a little bit. Yep, that worked. Come on. We will have you, sir. We will have you. Come on. Gotcha. Light back on. At least we're going to get something out of this. So we found a cache of curiosities. A bolt of fabric. Nice. Bolts of cider spill. Spider silk. That'll pay for a lot of this journey. Excellent. Right, so we were actually up here. So let's head back up there. Follow those beacons of Ross. Let's see if we get any. Yeah, we're not getting that much more on the uh, the maps. But we're still going to Hunter's Keep. Should we go to Hunter's Keep? Let's go to Hunter's Keep. Sleep when you're dead. Spend some time in bed, which will unlock one supplies, or tough it out. Let's tough it out. So we lost Terra. That's good. Right, what else to talk about? Yeah, we talked about RimWorld, and uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was um, uh, my subscriber list. Now I've got, uh, what was it, 763 subscribers as of recording which is great, I really appreciate that. And I'm thinking that uh, I need to start thinking about what... Oh dear. Look out shouts far above, the full stars in the cavern roof are shifting. A rare and ominous event, which has only happened three times in the last few episodes. What now? So we can forget them to look or we can record the change and assign a name. Let's do that. Let's let's try our luck. We were fortunate. Batsy's luck. A gap tooth stoker of hers. All agree. Leathery, but lucky. And tasty too. Right. That actually went better than I was hoping. What was I uh, talking about here? Yes, yes, 1,000 subscribers. If I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a 10-hour live stream. Now, I've been doing a few longer live streams because I'm bored at the moment and because uh, I wanted to try it out. And they, they've been fun. And I'm going to try and get a few people on to, uh, to talk during the live stream, play a few different games. And uh, I'm also considering about uh, doing something for charity here. Um, Hunter's Keep, all that pinnace. Let's do that pinnace. Which is, for some strange reason, just gone straight past us. So let's just back in there, shall we? Don't know what happened there. That looks a little bit buggy. So we'll just dock. There we go. Rest us nights again. Ignore them. We've lost another terror. Excellent. Hunter's Keep. Let's reconnoitre the islands. There's another port report. Who have we had lunch with recently? We've had lunch with Phoebe. We've had lunch with Rusi. Let's have lunch with Cynthia. Cynthia grasps your arm and whispers to you. Her eyes are wide and blue. Her hair is wild and tangled. Bats might nest in it. Yum. It seems to you that you're sitting on a hillside above a wide blue lake, listening to a story of murder, an axe, a net, blood on scented water. Another chop? Cynthia asks. You've barely touched your food. Here, 
I'll have the maid wrap something up for you. So we gained a lot of supplies. We are acquainted with the sisters, but something has changed. Ooh, interesting. And the parlor is empty. We have no news, so we can't um, do that one. So, right, that's it. Let's just try that and see if that's changed. No, it hasn't. The maid makes it clear through a series of unwelcoming growls that Phoebe, Lucy, and Cynthia are all three indisposed. No lunch today, apparently. Okay, we're done there. Let's move on. Let's ignore that buggy ship. Ooh, now that one's not buggy. And that one is a pirate steam pinnace. I think we will have that one. Something I particularly dislike about these uh, um, controls at the moment is that uh, so much of the, the south of the, the screen is blocked by the heads-up display. And I took quite serious damage the other day playing this because I, I couldn't see the ship that was attacking me until it attacked me. So let's go and pick up another cache of curiosities and see how we're going. All right, cache of curiosities, continue. Some sort of barrel. Mm, a firkin of prisoner's honey. That will sell quite well. This is what they call prisoner's honey. Rung by the lamplighter bee from the exile's rose. I wonder who makes up those names, marks Abel she Seaman Cargett. Someone who has read a sight too many books, I'm thinking. It's alright, we have a firkin of prisoner's honey. That was well worth it. And let's put the lights back on and head back to port. So what have we talked about so far? We have talked about Rimworld. We have talked about a thousand subscribers. And if you are not subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, regardless of that fact, leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. and. Uh, any comments, constructive criticism, notes about what you had for lunch, anything like that is always welcome. Um, there's one other thing I want to talk about in this uh, game. We'll get to the port first. It's um, uh, about Minecraft. Minecraft seems to be going down very well on my channel at the moment. Um, we've just added somebody new to the server. And... Uh, they seem to be having fun, and hopefully we'll see seeing some more of those soon. And uh, I'm also inclined to start doing a couple of um, extra things, as well as my, my Minecraft series and all the, uh, the live stream stuff that I do. So uh, I'm thinking about doing a few single player um, worlds, one of which is I'm just going to go through how I start a game. And uh, you know, perhaps point out a few tips and tricks and perhaps pick up a few in return for the comments, I certainly hope so. And the other one is I'm thinking of starting a few of the uh, the challenge maps. And the ones I'm thinking of doing at the moment are either Skyblock, which is where you start off in, with just a single block, and uh, not just a single block, but it's a single lump of land is about 70, 80 blocks of earth, and a chest full of few bits and pieces and a tree. And you're given a load of challenges to go from there. It's all completely vanilla. The alternative idea I have is Agrarian Skies, which is more or less a similar setup, but it's a heavily modded version, and it's got a completely different sets of challenges. So if you know either of those, or you're curious about either of those, please do leave a comment and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, because I'm looking forward to hearing um, what you guys think, what you guys would like to see, what you're looking forward to, and things like that. And uh, no, the one final thing is I have promised that I will like, finally get some of my Sims 3 stuff up in the new year. So look forward to January if you're interested in that sort of thing. So let's just do this little bit. We have well past 30 minutes now. So let's do a little bit more and then I'm going to call this an episode. So here we go. 
an inspection by the Ministry of Public Decency. Some things are just too illegal for the Customs Service to admit the existence of. The Ministry are here looking for those. We say we have nothing to hide. Or we can gentle encouragement. We don't have enough money for that, but we don't have any of these, so we have nothing to hide. You shrug and invite them to search your ship as thoroughly as they would like. They leave scuff marks on the newly scrubbed decks and take great pleasure in tangling the rigging. They find nothing more dangerous than a mouldy ship's biscuit. And believe me, there is nothing more dangerous than a mouldy ship's biscuit. Right, what do we get from the harbour master? Hey, we have a free evening, something has changed underneath, and someone wants to sign on. So let's run through the London stuff quickly, and then we'll call it an episode. So, right. Lodging first. Read the morning papers to get some news. The Echo Bazaar, that enigmatic marketplace, has increased its tax on love stories. The traitor empress is forbidden singing in the street outside a palace. The anarchists of the calendar council have inexplicably dynamited a drinking fountain. The Ministry of Public Decency has located and destroyed a nest of nail-biter wasps. So we gained some news out of that. That's good. Uh, we can't rest because we don't have enough money. We can't purchase. Uh, we don't do any of the rest of that. So let's move on. Um, back into London. Visit the Admiralty Survey Office. So, Hunters Keep one. That's given us another five echoes, which is good. Uh, <laughs> Shepherd Isle, submit his fact. No, I don't think we will do that. We shall fit um, submit it as hearsay. And, oh, we have a new accomplishment. Surveyed Shepherd Isles. And we gained ten echo. Very nice. And Abbey Rock. We categorize it as a military installation, you know. Although it is that has occasioned some quite vigorous debate. So that's given us 20 Echo. Given us a new accomplishment. Uh, we no longer have that. And our Admiralty report uh, favor remains unchanged. We need to find some new ports, reports to get that up. I spent a little bit of that repairing the ship um, while testing some stuff out, and I did it rather stupidly, so there we go. Right, that's done. Uh, let's head back into London and see what we got. The first thing is... New Recruit. So, we can have a Tyrus Mechanic, which we can't afford, or a New Zailer, which we can. Let's have a New Zailer. There we go. Right, that leaves us a bit short on money. So I think I'm actually going to take this offer up. A very fine evening to you, Captain. My, what you might call, mentor is very fond of adventurous sea captains. And he would like to offer you what you might call a dispensation, on account of he is so fond of sea captains. Behind the blind bruiser on the dock stands a dray piled high with fuel and supplies. So we can accept it, we can inquire further, or we can refuse. Let's inquire further. He runs a very fine and very liberal establishment just across the river, which is much patronised by zealers and men of wit and vinegar. A public house, you might say, and there is no obligation to speak of. My patron would only hope that that you remember him kindly, and I suppose that if the opportunity should arise for you to return his kindness, then I do not imagine he would refuse your offer. So let's accept. So, right, we now have one suspicion, which I believe is something new. And we've gained 10 fuel, and we've gained size supplies, so that's actually put us back on a, a better footing. We do need to find some way of making money, because basically we're not. And um, the money we made from this trip round, we did three port reports. That was not enough to cost the fuel, cover the cost of the fuel to go into those port reports. Uh, shops, let's see what we can sell off. So we can sell that prisoner's honey, which will get us tw 20 echoes. And that spider silk will get us 50. 
So, yep, yeah, let's put us back on a, a reasonably fair footing. And I suppose technically we can make money by just sitting outside the port and shooting those uh, pinnaces. But that's uh, uh, not too bad. Okay, um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Back to our lodgings, we can rest. That's got us rid of that wound, that's lost us some terror. We're not that terrified now. And there's nothing much else we want to do here. Oh, I, mm, I can rest again. That's interesting. Uh, there's actually some some benefit to that. Build up a couple of restful nights. It cost us some money, but we've got some resources. I may well do that in the next episode. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to leave it here. I have been Simon Parsons. This has been, after a long, long hiatus, Sunless Sea. Thank you, and good night.